Hello everybody, <clears throat> this is Mr. Payo. I've been trying really hard for the past 20 minutes to try to uh, record myself so you could see myself in the classroom, but it's just not working. So here we are. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to move uh, forward with marriage. Quick review from last class. We started the second of four uh, sections on marriage. It's a free gift in which we freely choose, you know, someone else, you know, in its entirety. Uh, we talked about how Jesus uh, no longer permits uh, divorce, it was allowed in the past, but it's not allowed now. It's also a bell ringer you should have done. Um, and uh, the only exception Jesus gives is for porneia, which uh, I think we can understand in this t context is a biblical word for incest. Um, uh, and we, we got to get our uh, terms straight, so we talked about divorce, um, the, the oftentimes the need for physical separation, However, even if you get a divorce or you separate, you are still, you could be bound before God with this spouse uh, of yours. Um, and so you need to honor that sacrament. And so if you uh, want to evaluate, if you have the fullness of that sacrament, then you apply for an annulment to, to hopefully, uh, you know, allow the church to judge your marriage to be inadequate. Your, your marriage, which you have gotten already a civil divorce from, you are no longer sacramentally bound uh, when you get this annulment declared. All right. So what's new today, and it shouldn't take too long, it's only four slides, is we're going to talk about the main reasons why the Catholic Church offers annulments. Okay? Okay. Top reasons why marriages are declared null, meaning that you are not sacramentally before God bound to this person. Number one reason you should be writing this in your notebook is the lack or defect in the canonical form. This means, uh, canonical means church. So there was a lack in the church form. You did not go about your marriage in a churchy way. <laughs> you did not seek the advice and the guidance of the church when you got married. So you look at this picture uh, of Las Vegas and you have Elvis there and it's a, a kind of stereotypical of Vegas, but you fall in love with somebody one night and you go find um, a, a nice fun person to go marry you, such as an Elvis impersonator. And uh, this couple that you see pictured here, now this is not a true story, I just got this off of Google Images, but if this couple were to apply for an annulment years later, um, it would probably be granted because they never like got married in a church, they never had a blessed by a priest, so there was a lack of the church form. All right, um, to put some more words to it, if the marriage was performed by a judge or non-Catholic minister, and there is no permission granted to the couple to be married outside of the church, the marriage can be declared invalid. Okay? It's, it, it can be that simple uh, for the church to declare your marriage null and void. It's, <clears throat> in other words, the church can say, God did not bound you together or seal you with graces because you never looked for graces. You never even asked for graces. You went to Elvis instead of a priest. All right. Now, I know a common question out there is, Mr. Pale, but can we get married on a beach? The answer is uh, you have to get special permission, and uh, good luck with that. But for the most part, the Catholic Church expects you to get married in the church. It's certainly the most fitting place. Number two reason why the Catholic Church would declare marriage is null and void is due to a lack of consent. Now, this one gets tricky. But remember the, the title of the section. This is a free love. You have to freely give yourself to this person. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people who are not free in their uh, gift of self. Both persons have to make the consent of the marriage vows freely, meaning you're not pressured. 
nor are you constrained uh, when you take your marriage vows. Why would somebody not give themselves freely in marriage, Mr. Pale? Here you go. Pregnancy is number one. In other words, boyfriend, girlfriend, this is very common. They have sex. They find out that they're pregnant. And they don't want to have a child out of wedlock. They want to be married. They want to do things the old-fashioned way. So what they do is they hurry up and they get married. Pregnancy. Uh, so pregnancy is uh, a reason why a lot of people get married. And that's not a very good reason to get married. Uh, it's a noble one uh, that you want to provide for this child. But frankly, if you're not ready to commit to this person and you're, you're just marrying them for the sake of being married when you have when you give birth to the baby, that's not a very good reason. So you could be pressured. You see how that could create a pressure on you to get married when maybe you shouldn't be or you're not prepared to be. What often happens in the Catholic Church is if um, a couple comes to a priest and says, oh, we'd like to get married and yes, we're pregnant. I think the priest will often say, uh, okay, great. Why don't y'all just focus on the baby right now, give birth, and then come back and uh, and get married, so that you know there's a greater assurance that they're not getting married uh, only for the baby. Have the baby, and then and then you can get married. Uh, that's commonly what happens, but not always, perhaps. Number two, family pressures uh, could somebody could feel pressure. You know how it is when uh, two families really like each other over the boyfriend girlfriend, then and they both everybody sees them as married, and the family is pressuring one side to marry the other, and and it's that expectation, and you feel like you're going to let your family down if you've been dating somebody for three, four years, maybe five, and you don't really you're not confident that you can marry them it's going to be a hard breakup but if you know families can put that pressure on you frankly um i actually had uh an aunt uh my aunt was getting married to her first husband she's currently on her third um but she was getting married to her first husband and while she's putting on her wedding dress she tells my grandmother her mom that I don't think uh, I should marry this guy. She's not feeling it on the wedding day. And uh, her mom just told her to, to ignore that feeling. It'll work out. Don't worry about it. And then she went off and married the guy, you know. So, that, I mean, there, there can be a pressure, you know, when somebody's pressuring you to not look at what's glaring back at you, then um, then that's, uh, that's hard. So, another one. Um mental and personality disorder. So if somebody has a mental illness um, <clears throat> that is at a clinical level, um, anything perhaps from uh, high anxiety even, if you're super anxious about being married or not being married in life and you finally find somebody that you think you can marry and, and you know, you're, you're largely acting off of a, you know, clinical anxiety, that can happen. Um, you can act out of a depression, hoping that this marriage, while you're not excited about it, might be able to lift you out of depression. So that serious mental uh, struggle for, for people uh, can cause them to get into a marriage that they should not be in. Or, you know, of course, in, in greater extremes, schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, all these things can make us act in ways that we are not freely giving ourselves to the other person. If somebody is actively and highly using drugs and alcohol, in an addictive way, they're not able to focus on the marriage. They're not able to uh, properly understand what they're getting into. There would be a lack of consent. Uh, and so the, in all these circumstances, the Catholic Church would say, these people were not ready to get married. Um, there was something pressuring them uh, to do it the wrong way, basically. And so the church can declare these marriages null and void you're free to go marry somebody else number three is uh immaturity you see this uh, immature boy with his uh flip phone this is a growing reason why the catholic church <clears throat> is declaring marriage is null and void the church can say that you were a bit too naive about your marriage you were a little bit too goo goo gaga you didn't really Prepare for providing for your significant other, you know, 
Um, you were not aware of what you were getting into. You were just very much in love in college. You got married maybe your senior year of college. And you, you, were, you were not thinking at all about how you would live this out. You were too naive. If you don't know the importance of marriage, um, then uh, and all the responsibilities that go into it, the church will say your, your vows were inadequate because you, you didn't know what they would mean or imply. And so you have to be mature to get married. Um, you know, I think it's a rare person nowadays that can actually get married in college. Um, and oftentimes I think the average person requires, you know, a year or two outside of college uh, to adequately prepare for this commitment of marriage. So immaturity is a reason for the marriage to be declared none of all, null and void. Now this next bullet point is actually uh, meant to be a little bit humorous. <clears throat> to prevent this, the church demands that the couple take classes in preparation for marriage and that they be engaged for six months. So you got to prepare for the sacrament. You got to be engaged for at least six months so we can actually talk this out and have enough time to prepare. Church law actually requires also that the girl be uh, 14 years old and the guy 16 years old. That's because girls mature a little bit quicker than guys do on every level. Uh, and so that is uh, some small, small ways the Catholic Church tries to uh, make sure that we're mature enough you know, to get married. Of course, nobody in America, no Catholics in America are getting married at the age of 16, um, that I know of at least. But the idea is that even in other cultures um, where people do get married at a younger age, uh, there's still, uh, there's still uh, a bottom limit, an age limit. All right, your last reason, <clears throat> believe it or not, that the Catholic Church would declare a marriage null and void is because leading up to the marriage, one of the spouses, one of the fiancés, was lying about something significant. Lying about a previous marriage. Oh, yeah, oh, by the way, I forgot that I was actually married to somebody else. By the way, I am not sexually attracted to you or even your gender. That happens to a desire not to have children. So if, a, if the spouse lies about something very intrinsic to the married, marital union and, and about the marriage and about the goals and desires they have for the future, this is grounds for an, an, annul, an annulment. And uh, maybe when y'all get back on campus, I'll be able to show you the prenuptial inquiry form. Um, there's an actual form the Catholic Church has you fill out, kind of to make sure that uh, you are telling the truth and that it's on paper. And um, it'd be a lot more uh, fun to walk through uh, when y'all are on campus. So lying, if you're lying about something serious and intrinsic to the marriage, the Catholic Church would consider that... Um, harmful. Uh, and of course, you did not have a valid marriage because one of the spouses married under a false pretense. Um, so that stuff happens. It's sad. But, um, you know, you can move past it when you apply for an annulment. All right. All right. I will take uh, questions either on Google Meets or through your next Socrative Bell Ringer. And I will hopefully see you soon. Have a great Thanksgiving.